10 things you didn't know about LeBron James. Everybody knows LeBron James. Even while still in high school, LeBron was bombarded with media attention. But just when you think you understand all that is this basketball legend, another surprise emerges from the incredibly complex story of King James. Here are 10 things you didn't know about LeBron James. Kobe! And I believe Darren Williams tried to dunk it. Well, three-pointer of the game. The brilliant Number 10, living with coaches. Many know that LeBron didn't play any sports until he was nine when he took up both football and basketball. But the reason for this is due to his early family life, which was quite unstable. His father was never really in the picture, and his mom had to move from place to place in Akron, Ohio, trying to make ends meet. His mother, Gloria, realized that her son needed a more stable environment and allowed him to move in with a youth football coach named Frank Walker. Walker then introduced young James to basketball and the rest is history. However, this wasn't LeBron's first time living with a coach. James first began playing football after Bruce Kelker encountered him in a group of boys he wanted to recruit for his under 10 football team. LeBron was such a phenomenal running back that Bruce took in both he and his mom to live with him out of concern for the young boy and a desire to hang on to his prized running back. Number nine, laid out by his own mother. During LeBron's early youth football career, his mother was heavily invested in her son's team. She became the team mother, volunteering in any way she could in lieu of paying for LeBron's participation. She was also a die-hard fan, and during one faithful touchdown celebration, she hit LeBron's shoulder pad so hard, he dropped to the ground. Number eight, smoked a little weed. As a junior in high school, LeBron was engulfed in a deluge of media attention. He had already been Ohio's Mr. Basketball and among other accolades, he had been featured on the cover of Sports Illustrated. In his book, Shooting Stars, LeBron admits to smoking marijuana during his junior year as a way to cope with life in the spotlight. Marijuana laws and social acceptability had relaxed since the early 2000s, but back then, it was considered a pretty serious crime. Number 7. Hummer Troubles For his 18th birthday, LeBron's mother leveraged her son's future NBA earning power to get a loan big enough to buy young King James a Hummer. This stirred up some controversy and an investigation because of Ohio High School Basketball Association prohibits any amateur from receiving gifts worth over $100 in return for athletic performance. They were cleared of any wrongdoing since it was just a mom giving a birthday present to her son. LeBron really did break these rules later that season when he accepted two jerseys from a clothing store in exchange for posing for pictures. What could have been the end of his high school career became only a two-game suspension and a forced forfeit by St. Vincent St. Mary High School. Number 6. First Game Scoring Record It comes as no surprise that James holds all sorts of scoring records, but this began in his very first NBA game. After being drafted directly out of high school by the Cleveland Cavaliers, LeBron scored 25 in his debut performance, setting the first game scoring record for players who skipped college ball. Number 5. Vogue 
James is the first black man and third man of any race to appear on the cover of Vogue magazine. This also bought LeBron a lot of media attention, as did everything else he's ever done, because it was thought to reference a World War I poster of King Kong. It kind of does look that way. What do you think of that picture? Let us know in the comments. Number 4. Ambushed The buzz around LeBron's NBA career was in full swing even before the regular season had begun. At a time when fans weren't necessarily too interested in the NBA Summer League, the anticipation surrounding James caused events to be moved to larger arenas to handle the eager crowds. The Cavaliers had already had to deal with fans rushing their vehicles as they arrived for the Summer League matchups. So for a game in Boston, the team arranged a charter bus and what was supposed to be an isolated parking lot. However, fans hid underneath parked cars and when the Cavs players exited the bus, these sneaky spectators rolled out from under their cars and ambushed the players, attempting to get a glimpse of King James. Number 3. Encouraging Words in a December 2016 game in Milwaukee, LeBron passed up NBA great Moses Malone on the all-time scoring chart. But 13 years earlier, LeBron had another encounter with Moses Malone while anxiously awaiting his very first game in the big leagues. When he was only 19 years old, James was joined by Malone for lunch in his hotel room. Even though LeBron had already been dubbed a superstar and had become a household name, Moses offered words of wisdom and embraced LeBron as a player during a time when many unfair comparisons and juxtapositions were flooding the airwaves. A few years later in 2009, LeBron paid Malone's good deed forward to another young player, Juwan Staten. Staten's team had just lost the state championship game to LeBron's alma mater, St. Vincent, St. Mary. As the raw emotions took hold of this promising junior guard, LeBron gave him a big hug and offered words of wisdom very similar to the ones spoken to him in his hotel room years ago. Number 2. Miami Pastime After leaving the Cavaliers for sunny Florida beaches, LeBron became even more heavily scrutinized by media and fans. So to enjoy the weather and to take his mind off of things, he took up cycling. But like everything LeBron does, this hobby garnished its own slew of public attention, even becoming the topic of a Nike commercial. You could say this pastime to escape the public eye backfired. And number one, Wedding Crasher. Right after his first championship, LeBron did an interview with journalist Lee Jenkins. Jenkins had made a deal with LeBron earlier in this season that if he won a ring, they would do another sit-down. LeBron agreed, and here they were in the Ritz, ready to chat. It was such a nice day out that they forewent the scheduled conference room and decided to talk outside on a veranda. As they wrapped up the interview and stepped back indoors, they discovered themselves standing in the middle of a Jewish wedding. The starstruck guests raise a speechless glass to the newly crowned champ, and LeBron chimes in with Lachaim, you're getting rings. I'm getting a ring. Now you know some stuff about LeBron James you probably didn't know before. One thing we all know is that this legendary player will go down as one of the greatest sports figures of all time and we have the distinct privilege of watching it unfold before our very eyes. If you love this video, please hit subscribe and we'll be back shortly with more Hoop Hustlers. And until next time, long live the king.